besties! Have you ever wondered what keeps your heart beating and your muscles moving like clockwork? It's not just willpower, it's sodium, the silent superhero of our bodies. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get started! If you're new here, I'm Nurse Chung, armed with a master's degree in nursing education and over a decade of teaching experience, here to decode all the mysteries that we're going to be learning about with this mineral today. So let's start with the basics, pathophysiology. Sodium, symbolized by Na, is an extracellular mineral, absolutely vital for several key functions in our body. You can think of sodium as the director orchestrating everything from how much water our cells are going to hold to how nerves communicate and even how our muscles contract. It's not just about adding flavor to our food, sodium is essential for guiding the overall activities that keep our body systems running smoothly. A cool memory trick to help me remember what sodium does is I like to think of Na as being necessary for activity because it's essential for nerve and muscle functions. In terms of interaction, sodium does not work alone. It's closely regulated with potassium and chloride to maintain cellular function and control our blood pressure. So what's considered normal? Sodium levels found inside our blood should typically be between 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. These levels can be influenced by several factors like what we eat, how much we drink, and even changes in our hormone levels. Another cool memory trick to remember the normal levels is I like to think of 135 to 145 keeps cells alive. It's really an easy way to remember the normal sodium range. So where can we find sodium? Sodium is predominantly an extracellular mineral, which means that it primarily resides outside of our cells. Typically, whenever we observe higher normal numbers for any electrolyte like sodium, it indicates that the ions are primarily found in the extracellular spaces. So let's take a closer look at how sodium functions, starting with how it maintains fluid balance. Sodium is the primary ion in extracellular fluid, and it plays a key role in regulating osmotic balance across cell membranes. This ultimately means that sodium helps maintain the balance of water between the interior of cells and the surrounding fluids. Remember, water follows salt. Water is naturally drawn to where sodium hangs out. It's similar to how you might crave water after eating a really salty meal. With high sodium levels in the bloodstream, water from inside our cells are going to come rushing out and this is going to lead our cells to shrink. When sodium levels can become excessive, it can lead to things like edema, where fluid is going to accumulate in our body's tissues. As more and more fluid begins to build up, that excess is going to be stored in areas like our legs, our ankles, and our feet, and you're going to see a lot of noticeable swelling. In more severe cases, this fluid accumulation can end up in the lungs, resulting in pulmonary edema, which impairs our breathing and our oxygen exchange. On the flip side of that, when there's a scarcity of sodium in our blood, the water feels a little bit lonely and it starts to move towards where there's still some sodium left. Even if there's just a small amount of sodium inside of our cells, the water is going to start to move in, causing the cells to swell. Another function of sodium is it directly influences blood pressure and blood volume. As water starts to enter the vascular space, as we talked about with our hypertonic example, it increases the total volume of blood within the circulatory system. This increase in blood volume raises the pressure found within our blood vessels. So what exactly is blood pressure? Blood pressure is defined as the force exerted by circulating blood on the walls of the blood vessels. It directly influences both the amount of blood and the resistance encountered from vessel walls. So if we see an increase in the volume of blood due to that high sodium levels, the blood is going to exert more pressure against the vessel walls, leading to elevated blood pressures, also known as hypertension. However, if we're seeing lower than normal sodium levels in the extracellular space, then this could lead to a reduced blood volume, leading to hypotension known as low blood pressure. In addition to fluid balance and blood pressure, sodium plays a critical role when it comes to trans transmitting nerve signals through action potentials. Sodium ions are crucial for generation and propagation of action potentials in neurons. When a nerve signal is initiated, the sodium channels that are in the neurons membranes are going to open, allowing sodium ions to rush into our neuron. 
This influx of sodium causes the electrical potential inside the neuron to become a little less negative. This process is known as depolarization. After the area of the neuron depolarizes, we're going to move into signal propagation. What happens here is that the adjacent sodium channels are going to open up in a wave-like fashion along the neuron. Ultimately, this is going to lead to propagation, where that electrical signal is going to move down the length of our nerve fiber, where it's going to ultimately reach the synapse. Here is where the neurotransmitters can be released, thereby continuing that transmission of the cell signal onto the next neuron. And last but certainly not least, we have muscle contraction. Sodium's role in muscle contraction is closely tied to its function when it comes to nerve activity. Muscle contraction begins when a motor neuron releases something called acetylcholine, and it releases it here at the neuromuscular junction. This is what's going to trigger the opening of those sodium channels in the muscle cell membrane. The influx of sodium depolarizes the muscle cell membrane, which then triggers the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum inside of our muscle cells. The increased calcium concentration inside of the muscle cells are going to lead in that interaction between our actin and myosin, which is responsible for muscle contraction. So you may be wondering, how exactly is sodium regulated? This is achieved primarily through our kidneys, which adjust sodium level concentrations by either excreting or reabsorbing it, depending on what the body needs. Hormones regulated by your endocrine system like aldosterone, an antidiuretic hormone, also known as ADH, also play a pivotal role in this regulation. Aldosterone, for example, helps regulate sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion in the nephron of the kidneys. A cool memory trick is to remember that ALDO stores NA. ALDO, meaning aldosterone, who is in charge of storing sodium NA inside of our body. And then, of course, we have our good old antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin, primarily regulates water balance in our body. So what ADH does is it acts on our kidneys and it's going to increase water reabsorption, which decreases urine output and helps dilute the blood's sodium level. Hence the name antidiuretic. It means against urinating. You can think of ADH as the body's aqua defender. What it's going to do is it's going to hold on to the water when the body senses that things are getting a little bit too salty or if there's not enough blood volume. And then we have the sodium potassium pump. This also plays a pivotal role in balance of sodium as well. So what this pump actually does is it moves sodium ions out of our cell and potassium ions into the cell. This is essential when it comes to maintaining that resting membrane potential, which is the electrical charge difference across the cell membrane. For every three sodium ions that you're going to see pumped out, you're also going to see two potassium ions being pumped into the cell. This is going to create an electrochemical gradient. This active transport process requires ATP, which is the energy we need in order to make this process happen. It ultimately highlights how energy intensive it is to maintain electrolyte balance inside of our body. I hope that this information is helpful in understanding what you need to know when it comes to sodium concepts. As always, if you have any questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to our store at nursechungstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources in order to help you ace those fluid and electrolytes. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye!